they would leave that porcel in the wall to rot. And we're guessing it was about 250 years till he was found, and there was scratch marks with dried blood and bits of meat. Oh wow! And that's why we believe the Pax house is so haunted because not all the Shanghai's ended up well. Mm. Now, one of the waiters working there, a lot of ghost stories. He wanted to see for himself. So during his shift, he sneaks down through the tunnels, and his path gets blocked by a big wall of rubble. So he goes to turn around, and he hears footsteps coming from the corner. Now, logically, it's his managers come to yell at him, right? So he yeah. goes to hide. But one footstep turns into two, to three, to four, to five. The waiter reports seeing five men dressed in 19th century clothing, carrying an unconscious body, walk past them, seemingly not noticing him, and right to that wall of Wow. Yeah. <laughs> He used to say he put in his two weeks that day. <laughs> yeah, well. He got his fill of stories. Huh. Now, it has fallen into legend far more than this. Like, there's so many different versions. You ask each person, it's something different. Like, some examples have said that Anna was a barmaid working at this inn and fell in love with a sailor who didn't love her back. Some say she was actually brought to Savannah as a bride for an arranged marriage. I've even heard a couple others that she came here and stayed with her husband and found him having an affair with her. No idea which which one's the right one, but they all end up the same. She either jumps, falls, or is pushed out of the window of the 1790 inn, which is a smitten green building coming up here. Um, here we go by. Oh, I see her. She is out. So the top floor, and you might have to lean in because this trolley is especially tall. But that big window right there, do you see her? Yeah. Big window. <laughs> That window right there. Oh, the one that's standing, girl? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and they put her there to show her room to a forest because that's where she makes her presents most of them. One of my favorite stories. During the Christmas season, four women kicked into that room. And they had a long day of travel, so they leave their luggage on the bed. They're going to unpack after coming back from dinner. Okay. So they come back, they unpack, they all realize they're going to something pretty important. All their undergarments are gone. Oh, wow. So they go down to the receptionist to try and figure out the whole panty rate situation and the receptionists are just as confused as they are. They check the security footage and no one went in or out of the ladies' room between the time they left for dinner and came back. And so at this point, one of the ladies turns around. It's the Christmas season. So she sees a big green Christmas tree. It gained a couple extra ornaments. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> New meaning to white Christmas is what one of the yeah. guys said. <laughs> um, she's been known to like hide people's keys and mess with people's things too. Mm. She's not the only presence. Oh, forgot one of my favorite stories. I had a woman on my floor who told me she was staying in that room alone. And she didn't sleep the night prior because the bed sheets kept moving by themselves on her. Go back to that. But she's not the only one in the room. So how she died again? It's... They're not sure. She left the window. Yeah. Somehow, um, like I said, the story has been changed as different people tell yeah. it. But they say she either jumped jump or right, push suicide, or... she was pushed or that she fell out of the very window that that doll is mm -hmm. onto the but uh, but is she just uh she's the homeowner or she's uh it's once again know. Oh, yeah, no no like, but no. some okay. versions say that she worked there other versions say she was staying there on vacation uh, we really don't know the concrete answer gotcha yeah uh, but yeah so there's also a cook staying there a cook spirit she practiced fuju and um, she does not like women. She especially doesn't like the women that work in the kitchen. That's where she hangs out. She's been known to steal lunch tickets, to throw silverware and spice jars, and she's been known to get physically aggressive with yeah. the spirits. But not all the spirits here in Savannah are so invi uninviting. Some of the ghosts we have are uninvited house guests themselves. If we're ready to pull up, OJ. I'm skipping around just a little bit. But, um,. We're going to be going past 210 East State Street, and an English gentleman in Savannah Women's Share Department. And I always say the scariest part of the tour is not even the black tea. Um, the Share Department, this yellow building up here, and despite yep. their less likeness of tea, they were reward report waking up every morning to find a freshly used tea That's cup sitting at the table. Oh, okay. So they called up the previous tenant of the apartment. Rodney and asked him, like, yo, what, what is happening? And he told them he really wanted to stay in the apartment and he couldn't say anything bad. He had to leave though because his girlfriend won't put anywhere to go. See, one morning, 
she woke up in half of her clothes, what was on the Christmas tree in the 1790s, mm -hmm. and she makes her way down to the kitchen, and she finds Rodney's mother sitting there sipping tea. Awkward situation already with the in-laws, but the two had never met. So they exchange some unpleasant pleasantries, and she makes her way back to the kitchen, not the kitchen, she already in the kitchen. She makes her way back to the bedroom to yell at Rodney for not giving her the heads up that his mother was gonna come visit. Now, I don't know how long the two were together, long enough for her to move in with him, but he had not yet told her that his mother had passed away two years ago. Oh, wow. See, when he first got the apartment, his mother would come visit him all the time, and she was an avid tea drinker. She threw herself mm -hmm. a cup of Earl Grey, and she'd sit at that very chair on the table reading the newspaper sitting in. Unfortunately, one morning, she had passed away due to a stroke right in that very spot. Okay. Now, she might have been a lovely woman, but they didn't want to share an apartment with a ghost, so get this, this is their solution, you ready? They wrote her a letter. They, were, they got a sheet of paper and they wrote, Dear Madam, Ronnie does not live here anymore, but if you would like to visit him, here's his new address. <laughs> and would you believe it actually worked? It worked? They said not a, not a single teacup would grace her table again. Wow. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. For real. For I real. wonder if, if she went to, to, to his current address. Yeah, we always say the, the real victim of the story is poor Rodney, never able to escape a mother's love. True, true, true. But yeah, I think it's so crazy. I bet she did. I bet <laughs> she was just there looking out for him. For sure. Now, coming up in front of us is going to be to our left we go by, Colonial Park Center. Now, it opened in 1750 and would host burials until about 1853, 100 years later. I would like y'all to pay attention when we go by the fences. Those are not the original boundaries of the cemetery. In fact, it expanded acres. And when they shrunk the cemetery down, the only thing that they moved were the headstones. So that just so you got a lot of bodies buried up on the streets. Before. We are driving okay. over Colonial Park Cemetery in this area. Okay. In fact, like a few blocks out in every direction if you're walking around. Oh, okay. Um, most of the headstones that they moved, they've been put on the back wall. If you're here during the day, um, the cemetery is open for you to come and take a look at it. Okay. And unfortunately, through the many years, the um, the headstones have faded to vandalism, especially during the Civil War. Oh, so a lot of parts of course. Some of them are pretty funny, though. Um, one, Miss Susanna Ray, it says she died by the will of God, struck down by lightning at 121 years old. Um, mm -hmm. One of them advertises brewery. We have uh, Captain I know, Jonathan Smith passed away in the right holding just 1700. <laughs> and one has the Jolly Roger. <laughs> now, when we drive by, I want you to keep your eyes open. Second tour, our other tour, if y'all are interested mm -hmm. in what's on the So, there's one right there, if you can see it. This group right here is surrounded by the one that protrudes the fence. Those are the crypts. Oh. So, of course, big family. How's everyone fitting there? So they would have a boat box. It's also called a long limestone ossuary in the center. And what would happen is when a new internment would have to be placed, they'd pick the oldest, hopefully the most decayed, and they put it on the bone box and it would heat it up. I don't understand the science behind it. No electricity, but it would heat it up and they would like, it's a bad joke, but I call it a family parfait. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Piled up, something like that. They were piled up and shrink something like that. Yeah, it, it would just be like, I don't want to say ashes, but basically ashes, like decomposed. Um, now, a really kind of gross fact is during the Civil War, um, during the cold winter 1820, the soldiers were known to break into the crypts at night to find worms. And what they would do is they just push off the dead body and sleep on the side of the sand. But even more disturbing, they would build fires in the bone box dead bodies as fire to them. <laughs> Not my meaning of a cozy thing. But we're going to be heading to our first stop soon, Angelo House. Now, it was completed in 1849, New York architect John Norris, home to the family of Angelo. Now, son William Lowe, grew up to Mary Juliet Gordon Lowe, founder of Girl Scouts. Always like to do a little debate with our favorite Girl Scout cookie. Are we on a Girl Scout cookie team? Me. I was Girl Scout before. And okay, I'm like, okay. <laughs> what was your favorite cookie? In Philippines, we have different ways. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. We don't have the same kind of cookie. Yeah. You know, there doesn't matter. We sell whatever. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. 
Well, I was telling, I had some guests from Ontario, Canada, and they only have two Girl Scout cookies. But I'll show you, right across the courtyard is the carrot. We're not going to go into the carrot house because it's owned by the Girl Scouts, but that's where the first headquarters is. And if you're looking at a Girl Scout cookie fix, they do sell Girl Scout cookies all year. So if you want, if you have some extra time, you want to stop in, get a taste of Girl Scout cookies. Mm -hmm. um, but when Juliette Gordon Lowe, so she lived in the home as an adult, and when she passed away in 1927, it was sold to the National Society of Colonial Dames of America in the state of Georgia by the trustee of her estate. 1950, they turned it into a house museum, and it's still open during the day if you want to come and get a glimpse at it with, with sunlight. But Ghosts and Gravestones has exclusive access to it in the evening. Now, technically, you have to go over, you have to sit until the trolley comes to a stop, the tears illuminate, I'm popping out first. I just want to ask that we're careful not to touch meat on anything. Um, okay. We can't have any food, drink, or candy inside. Sure, OJ's sticking on the trolley when we go in, so you can leave anything you'd like okay. on. Um, we also have a trash can. Please take out the One of our guides is unloading her guests, and they all saw a woman in a blue Victorian ball gown staring down at us. Now, we'll see upstairs when we get there. Is um, the upstairs bedroom have been standing so to be standing at that window. So it wasn't us. Um, <laughs> Little scavenger hunt point. They saw a blue Victorian ball gown. Pay special attention to the portraits. I want to see if y'all can guess who it is. But Andrew Lowe House. Andrew Lowe came to Savannah and he was originally here to help with his uncle's cotton merchant business. He took over the business. Unfortunately, he would not find too much happiness here in Savannah despite that. Mm -hmm. um, his first wife, Sarah Cecil Hunter, would pass away before this home was completed. And he would remarry. Two years later, Mary Stiles, Mary Cooper Stiles, so passed away shortly <laughs> after the birth of his sixth child. Needless to say, this home brought far too much sadness for him. So after that, he would go off to London, and that's where he'd spend most of his time. And over the course of the trips, one man would be trusted with the upkeep of the home. Mr. Thomas A. Millage, he was born a slave, but became one of the most well-trusted and respected friends of Andrew. Throughout the time they knew each other, no man garnered more respect from them. So much so that Andrew wrote him into the will. He wanted to make sure he was taken care of. When Andrew was to pass away, Mr. Millage was to receive $300 annually as long as he should live. Now, today's standard, that looks more like $10,000, $12,000 a year. Mm -hmm. Bad things happened in three as though. Both men would end up passing away the same year, 1886. So Mr. Millage never received that annual income, but it was given to his wife and kids. Mm -hmm. So there's a happy ending with that. Um, so my personal experiences with the house, uh, one of my favorite little stories before our friends come and pick us up and take us in is um, the first time I was working in the house, I was, we had a spirit, we know what a spirit box is. It's a really cool tool we use in paranormal investigation. It flips through radio sequences really fast. Oh, and stuff yeah, yeah, like yeah. 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 So if we're chilling, we have it on. And I was telling my coworkers a story of this guy who had went to Gettysburg and sang this song from the Civil War era and he heard voices singing back with it. And I was like, how sick would it be to be, to like sing with a ghost, right? And on the spirit box we heard, then start. And I was like, hold up, hold up, I don't know the song. Um, but my coworker was like, the Colonel, because you're gonna hear about the Colonel, might really like that. So we played it for him. And all our coworkers say the most unbelievable part of the story is that all of us stayed shut up long enough for a five minute song. But when the song was over, I asked, did you like that? Now I was working with all women and they're all to this side of me. But in my left ear, I heard an old Southern gentleman say, yes, I did, young lady. Hello. <laughs> it, didn't it, didn't <laughs> it didn't work. It didn't work. It didn't work. It was very quiet. Look at the details of the house. <laughs> now, do you be mindful that the rails on the right hand side is a little tacky? They have just painted it. Oh, okay. So if you have to use the handrails, use the one on the left. Okie dokie. We can't live in this house, we're so noisy. 
Welcome inside the Andrew Lowe House. Hello. Welcome. My name is Lynn Lawrence, and I am the head caretaker this evening. While I'm telling my tales, you folks are free to walk around and take as many pictures as you like. Mm -hmm. Each of these rooms are named after people who spent either the most time in these rooms or the most memorable, such as the room with the pink wallpaper to my left. That is known as the low bedroom because both Mary Lowe and Julia Gordon Lowe were spending a lot of time in that room. What? Yes, dear. They were quite drawn to it. Unfortunately, that means that they both passed away in the same room. Oh, Mary wow. Lowe passed away in 1863, shortly after giving birth, while Juliet Gordon Lowe passed away in 1927. Oh, hi, ladies. One, a very skeptical, no nonsense lady. Came here to remove the sandbags and open up the shutters. Wow, they were working, they could hear the sound of sobbing coming from the bedroom floor of the home. They were supposed to be the only two working that day, so they had to get to the bottom of it rushing right upstairs straight to the low bedroom where the source of the noise was. But they could not find a soul. Despite that, the sobbing continued to grow louder and louder until those women were filled with such a deep sadness and depression themselves, they had to vacate the premises. It was discovered a few days later that the same day that those society ladies had arrived was the exact same day of Mary Lowe's death, June 17th. Extra fun fact, the most requested day off at Ghost and Gravestones. <laughs> Across from you, the blue and white wallpaper is known as the Styles bedroom. This is named for Eliza Styles, Mary Lowe's mother. Mm -hmm. She came here after her daughter passed away to help take care of the children in the nursery. Also, your box. We have an app on our phone that has words, mm -hmm. and um, during the summer we were running behind. So I came up and I only sang him the first and last verse. Like I said, it's a long song. Almost, right mm -hmm. when I was done. And I'm like, yeah, I'm sorry, I can't sing at all. She's coming. And uh, our first guy to the street night. Street front. The street front. Street you are right. I was with she you. would, yeah. She never had it with me. I don't remember things very well. Street, street, street front. And then the woman, our first guy that night was one Yeah, of no, that's right, that's right, that's right. Um, But yeah, and I was like, yeah. Our first guy to the night was at the street front. So I needed to wrap it up real quick. <laughs> he understood, he was very, he was yeah. okay with it. Yeah. <laughs> that bell is our signal that we will be heading downstairs into the park. Uh, okay. <laughs> He's also down. That's pretty shiny. Welcome into the parlor room of the Andrew Lowe house. Oh, that's so pretty. To my right is the lady of the home, Mary Lowe. That blue dress is one of her favorites. And to my left is the man himself, Mr. Andrew Lowe, with the red hair. He was in his early 20s when he had that painted. But the informal family parlor is to my right, and the formal is to my left. That oh said, God, you me. should know that you are in the presence of a documented haunted object. Oh. It is that pianoforte. Mm -hmm. The upright design is very beautiful, I will admit. Unfortunately, it is this instrument's downfall as gravity pulls on the strings and it must be retuned. Every two to three hours. Yeah, we don't have time for that. Yeah. Neither do the society ladies, they have since cut the strings, it was woefully out of tune regardless. Yeah. Yet both guests and guides have heard perfectly in tune music coming from that piano. I personally have not. Mm -hmm. So if you two hear it tonight, don't let me know. I do not want to hear it. <laughs> or Welcome to the library of the Andrew Lowe House. This is where Mr. Lowe would be doing any business if he wasn't away in England. Where I am standing, however, is the butler's pantry. A few years ago, an interesting phenomenon occurred. The former director of the home was working downstairs in one of the offices, waiting for two society ladies to come by and talk shop. As he was passing the staircase leading up to the butler's pantry, he could hear a pair of women talking and laughing. He thought maybe the society ladies had arrived early, so he went upstairs. Roses? Hmm? Roses? Roses. I smell it back to over there. But was pantry. Into the most lavishly decorated room of the home. Welcome to the dining room. After the little family would have dinner, the ladies would go across the hall to sip tea and talk gossip. The men folk would stay here, talk politics, and smoke a few of those hand roll cigars. I love the I love the house. So cute. It is a beautiful home. 
Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good time. You too. Mm -hmm. Watch your step on the stripes. Thank you. I get all these texts from them like, we got something, we got something. Please come home as soon as possible. We got something. Um, they flat out told me, we have a picture of Mary. We have a picture of Mary in the library. And I'm like, what? And even my like friend who's like a little on the... And she was freaking out, and I get back, and they're like, white. They're, they're all white as a ghost. As a ghost. <laughs> and they told me that they brought it up on the computer, they were looking at it, and they went back to look at it again, and they see her, like she was white and wet, and they literally watched her disappear from the picture. And she hasn't been in the picture since. Mm. That's so weird. Yeah. Okay, so this house here, this is the Hamilton Turner Inn. Oh, I'm technically supposed to tell y'all, if you provide your um, ghost, They 
been sentenced to death, of course. Um, however, during the trial, Al surprised the jury with an announcement. She was actually pregnant. Mm. So he stayed her sentence. A few months later, beautiful baby boy James would be born. And they let her have him for two weeks. After that, she would march up to the long way to Gallows, where right here, right square, Alex Riley became the first person in Jordan history to be executed. Mm. Now, more of a warehouse that we've kind of thrown a lot of like old, not old artifacts. Fitting? No. No. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> Hate to break it to you. This would be a one size fits all. Oh wow. So if you don't think you can fit, don't worry. Don't worry. We'll they will fit. fit. They'll yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 They start work the out. ankles. They start yeah. chopping. Oh. Those folks with broader shoulders, because it's a fairly skinny coffin too. Yeah. Those will cut off. They cut any piece of you off to make you as snug as a bug in a little rug. That's why there'd be a section for the face. If you would be buried in this coffin, there'd be no open casket ceremony. Just your pretty face. Because there probably wasn't too much you left to see, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, true, true. <laughs> All right. I'm going to invite y'all to find a crate and make it. Why we're so haunted. So the legend goes, a man finds himself partaking in drunken holiday. You know, a different kind of spirit. Jack and Daniel type of spirit. <laughs> <laughs> we have all sorts of Jack and Daniel type of spirits here in Savannah. Yeah. Especially yeah. if you're hanging around for the weekend. You will see that here. <laughs> um... But at this party, there's a party horn. Six in his back pocket. You know, it could come in use later. The drunk sometimes do he ends up wandering off. And his travels take him up and down the streets of Savannah until he gets to Colonial Park Cemetery. At that time, the clock begins to strike midnight. Now, mixing up his Christmas and New Year's holiday, he wants to celebrate. So he takes out the horn, digs in a deep breath, and gives a long step in class. Before he can finish, he's joined by a host of ghosts and figures who have risen from their graves from encircling him, thinking that he was Angel Gabriel, sounding the end times. However, they were soon disappointed to learn he was just a devil out for a good time, and they go to return to their graves. But as legend would have it, once you pass away, the legend here in Savannah is that your name is forgotten. You're only known by the virtues you attributed during life. And the spirit so hasty in their exit forgot to take note of where they've been buried. And legend says to this day, the fruit, well, jump in. The fruit was search continued until dawn, and when the sun rose, the spirits would rise before scattering out among our city, doomed to wander until the end times actually do come. And legend has it. That's what they're just doing. They're wandering around. Um, I do have a picture of the face if y'all want to see it from 